All right, everybody. I am here with Mel. Uh, Mel is one of my students. Um, I had the pleasure of teaching him in one of my workshops a few years ago, and I have always been very impressed with the rate of his progress and his work. Uh, Mel, why don't you say hi to everybody and just give him a little introduction to you. Hello, everybody. My name is Mel. Um, I'm on Instagram as MT Wells. Anywhere I post, I'm always just MT. But my name is Mel. Um, yeah, no, I've been a fan of Steven for quite some time. Had the pleasure of um, being a student. And um, yeah, I just love drawing form, making freaky things, surreal art. Trying to do my best with that. Yes. Yes. Um, so, for anybody who's wondering uh, what the hell are we doing here, um, I'm going to help Mel out. Uh, I don't know in what way. Uh, we don't have this planned, but um, I'm basically just going to chat with him for a while. And Mel has been gracious enough to allow me to record it and share it with you all so that you all can get a little bit of insight into this process. And of course, uh, get insight on whatever advice or tips I can give him. So um, the way that these sorts of things always go is you wind up talking about the mind, a more general meta check-in about art first, and then we'll look at the pictures afterwards. But um, yeah, Mel, I'm at your service, and I just want to hear uh, what are you thinking about in art lately? What's on your mind? How are you feeling? Yeah, no, so cur currently um, I've been pulling, pulling back from being overly indulgent with like social media in general. Mm. So just a lot of it tends to drive me crazy or one of the more sad things is like you find something you like or you think it's you think it's a sketch and it's just like something somebody generated oh, yeah. and, you know i guess yeah and the big thing is a lot of the stuff looks really good too right um you're talking specifically thing. about ai stuff oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and so um you know i i didn't want that to start to invade my personal enjoyment so I've just made it an effort to stay consistent with, um, you know, making my own art and challenging myself is the main thing. Um, yeah, just trying to be really in touch with, with what I like so it can keep me drawing because there's a lot of things out there that make you not want to draw, you know, and in terms of trying to make it a living or trying to get into the industry or your own kind of temperaments or your own failures with it or just, just all sorts of stuff. So I'm just like, let me just focus on maintaining my enjoyment and love for it moving forward and just you know, stay true to my interests. That's great. Uh, let, me, let me go back to um, the AI thing. So you're saying mm -hmm. that basically at this point, AI has sort of driven you away from social media a little bit because I think you said that you were trying to yeah. step back from it. Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, like anybody, I love art and I love looking at it and I love getting inspired, seeing the kind of things people make. Um, but yeah, I would say in the last year, there's just such a flood of, of AI art. And, um, you know, even situations where like, I would think it's like an actual person's work. I find out it's not their work and I don't want that to start to hurt my own enjoyment, you know, with art. So I'm definitely just kind of pulled back to that side, the whole social aspect a bit, you know, outside of like just posting my work here and there. Um, but I try not to doom scroll too much. I just want to. <laughs> you know, because you know it, it, it'll affect me, so I just want to stay stay online. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So I want to point out that that's kind of a well, a little a little personal tragedy in in miniature, right? right? Like I, I mm -hmm. uh, that really sucks that AI would be getting in your head like that enough that it would make you get off of social media. And I'm not going to shed any tears over that because there's a lot of other problems with social media short of yeah, right, AI. Right. So uh, it's not like you're missing out on some unabated good. There's definitely a lot of mm -hmm. other bad stuff that you're also avoiding by getting out of there due to AI. But, you know, just in general, damn, that is fucked up. That is fucked up. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so strange, too, because it kind of is just over, overnight. I mean, turn out it's just everywhere. And, um, you know, we even got... It, it comes in all forms of ways of looks and styles and all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just love art made by people, <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's what it, what it comes down to. Yeah. I, I hope we get some sort of clear way to differentiate, um, sooner rather than later, but, um, I'm not quite sure what that will look like or when that will come, but I definitely 
am assuming something is AI much more often than I used to. That's what I've been doing as well, and I hate that. Yeah, well, I hate it, that it, because I've been on the other end of it. How people assume my work was AI. Yeah, and, and that can that can suck, especially if you spend a lot of time on something, and it, and for someone to just write it off. Like I hate the idea of like me doing that, potentially doing that to other people. Yeah, and, no, you know, it's. It does suck. It, it, it's it's an evil goddamn thing to ha be happening. If I wasn't so deeply ingrained in the social media space, if I wasn't like a YouTube person, if I didn't share many years of sharing art online on Instagram, I think I would have got rid of the apps quite a while ago. And I I I think about getting rid of them for good almost every day, probably <laughs> almost every day. Yeah. And I go through phases. You know, I'll uninstall them for you know, a month, yeah. a month or two or something like that. And then I'll come back after the detox. But um, I don't right. know. I, I think the way things are going, a time may come where I'm just like, you know what? It's off completely, mm -hmm. completely gone. I'm not going back. Yeah, no, I um, I mean, I went at the same thing to where I, I did, I did delete like all that social media just before I got into, into drawing and wanting to learn and all that. And my love for that got me back in there because I like seeing other people's progress and process and I don't think people putting out the one that's to add to that, you know. Yeah. It, is, it is a really amazing way of communication, essentially. Yeah. Drawing, well, like you said, pictures and, you still share on there, right? You're just using yeah. them much less. You still post your art on there. Mm -hmm. I find when I open Instagram now, I'm like, uh, uh, it's like I'm snorkeling or something like that. I'm like, I take <laughs> a deep breath before I open it. And I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. here we're going to go. We're, we're going to go in and either find that post that I know I'm looking for, like a reference or something, mm -hmm. or I'm going to go in and post my thing that I'm trying to share. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get out, right? So I just like, <gasps> I go and I do it really fast. And then I try to get out. And even with that mindset, they still get me like half the time. Oh, yeah. I still, the first thing that it shows me, I'm like, oh shit, that's right. That thing. Oh, well, that reminds me of this. And then I do two other things on there before I'm like, why the fuck did I open this again? It's horrible. They, they, they really hijack your brain. It sucks. All right. So so social media sucks. Uh, I think we discovered that. No no one else had ever had that idea yeah. before. No one else had ever thought right, of that. Um, ground. But um, what's uh, so what's on your mind with art lately? So what have you been what have you been drawing? What um what things are interesting you in art? What do you feel is like your current challenges or just anything like that? Anything like that? Right, right. Well, you know, I, I spent the better half of, um, you know, the last year trying to um, kind of hone in, like, how I even use the tools. You know, most of my stuff now is digital, right? Um, I mean, everything that I've learned, I've learned on paper, but I moved to digital, and that's just kind of been where I've been comfortable at, and I like trying to make my digital stuff look like it is traditional. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of you know, figurative drawing and, and try to grow my anatomy chops. You know, um, kind of wanted to, to move away from just isolated, non-context having figures and try to make some sort of image with them, you know. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the struggle has been, you know, trying to be, trying to have something that's creative imaginative but also like utilizing references if i can get them and yeah you know, just just trying to compose images you know and i don't i don't really know much about composition other than does it look cool when i'm looking at it right, right? yeah yeah so yeah that's what i think it's a it's a classic problem and you've probably heard me mm -hmm. bring this up on streams but um for me the big the big question about composition is what exactly is the picture like what what right. is that is to say, what is it supposed to communicate? What is it about? Mm -hmm. Which weirdly is something people avoid talking mm -hmm. about in, at, at least in our little corner of art, right? Like illustration, drawing, right. things like that, especially the training part. Um, people don't talk about what pictures are about very much. Mm -hmm. they, kind of, they kind of avoid that. They, they just want to focus on the things that they can pretend are objective, right? That it's like, all right, well, if you, execution. Yeah. yeah. And of course it's not really like that. It's what each individual picture is about something different, hopefully, right? Hopefully you're not just repeating right. the same picture over and over again. And what, 
the answer to that question, what the picture is about, also guides the nature of the the composition. You know, they should be right. um, married very intimately. And that that's not a fun, that's almost almost not a teachable thing because it changes right. from picture to picture, but it is the the ground floor truth about pictures and composition. Um, so, you know, all of that to ask, do you feel like you are making pictures about stuff right now? Or do you feel a different way about your pictures? Right I think now? I've started that. I yeah. think I've started that. Um, Cause yeah. most of the time I, I sit down and I'll just draw and um, it will just become something as I'm drawing. Right. Yeah. At some point it'll be like, oh, okay, I can kind of make this into that. Um, only recently have I like put some any sort of pre thought. Not, not to say that I can plan images out. Like I, I still need to figure out what that process looks like for me. Sort of having steps and some sort of um, some sort of homework or study. You know, some sort of just study or ground stand before I actually start the drawing. Uh, most of the time, like I just have an an idea or a feeling that's really vague in my head, mm-hmm. and I try to find it while I'm making the, making the drawing. But I've been more more prominent about having at least some sort of opinion on what I want to draw before I actually start drawing it. That's great. Yeah. I think I I would I would maybe be saying something different to a different mm-hmm. student, you know, but I know mm-hmm. you. So I, I do think for you that is a good direction to go in mm-hmm. at this stage. I think um I think making picture uh, the, the this is almost it almost sounds ridiculous or beneath saying, but um, I don't think it is based on the way we talk about art these days. I I think mm-hmm. making pictures about stuff is a good idea for someone at your your level. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say drawing. This is a bad word for it, but people get it. Drawing random stuff until something comes forward. That's not to say there's anything wrong with that. That is a very useful process. I do that a lot, right? But so I think people sometimes think that that that's the end of it, that you're doing random right. things and that's that's all you're going to do. That's all that's happening. And maybe they have a favorite artist who from where they're mm-hmm. sitting, that artist is not making pictures about stuff. They're just doing sort of random things. But mm-hmm. um, I think that that's very rarely the case. And for me, when I sort of draw whatever without a plan, it's, it is inevitable if I do that for long enough that something that matters to me will emerge, right? I, I think that when you do that for long enough, you, you tap into your unconscious and eventually it offers up something that matters to the unconscious that matters to you and that has some sort of deeper meaning and then and then i i think it's a good idea to well recognize that as much as possible and then make the picture about that thing or then use that as raw information to go recompose a new picture that is about that Mm -hmm. thing or something like that does that make sense yeah absolutely it absolutely does that's definitely been my experience lately you know just having having some sort of idea, starting to draw, sort of starting to paint, and um, actual feelings coming through, you know, afterwards. Well, tell me, I, I, I don't know if it's too, um, I don't know if it's too personal, but um, however much you're comfortable talking with me about it, what feelings do you think the pictures are about for you? What are, what are the things that you're going through? Well, yeah, no, I think a lot of it is um, like self-reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of it is um, observing or taking note um, of like the kind of person I thought I was as opposed to the kind of person that I actually am. Nice. You know, um, I think a lot of times you, you can, you know, you can live your life or you can say certain things or you can walk around um, believing things enough to where what's actually there is not the case. It's just some sort of delusion um, or just some, some sort of comfort, mm-hmm. you know? And so like lately art has been a 
me trying to take these weird abstract things that are kind of hard to talk about because it is so like specific to each person you know even if you and i go through a similar situation our emotions and and feelings on it are going to be can be different or explained differently you know um so yeah it's just been trying to just take some sort of feeling and see if i can make that into an image you know like that's what i've been that's where i've been at lately yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, that's good. That's super, super interesting. So themes of self delusion, or almost mm-hmm. more, just like what you're. Uh, this is just me reacting, right, to, mm-hmm. to what you said. I, I'm not trying to say these are your themes, but just to sort of mm-hmm. treat what you said as a kind of Rorschach blot, like mm-hmm. the like your blind spots, right? Like the things yes. that yes. the the things that are going on that you're not paying the right attention to and that are sort of going to right. pop up and confuse you or or become a problem later on in life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. And those are, that's a very relatable experience for sure. And a very, um, mm-hmm. I mean, God, I have, um, I hate the feeling of like when, you know, when you do something with the best intentions, like, and yes. you're, you're okay. trying to do something good and you, you're not even really thinking about it. You're just assuming like, this is a good thing. This is the right thing mm-hmm. to do. And then you, you do that thing and you either wind up hurting someone or hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. And right. you, you look back on it then with some hindsight and you're like, that blew up in my face. Like I, I, I had the best intentions. I was trying to do something nice and I wound up wreaking havoc <laughs> in the world to some yeah, extent that's essentially <laughs> that's been me 101 yeah that's it i i hate that feeling that's one of the things that hurts me the most when 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 right. something like that happens to me that'll ruin multiple days for me i'll ruminate on that for oh it sets you back and it calls into question your character and your judgment your, your values all that kind of stuff yeah god it sucks god damn it god it sucks <laughs> So the, you know, the, the question then, and, and this is a, a big question that, you know, you don't know if you're going to stay on that theme or with those ideas or with those feelings for a day or the next 30 years, right? But to try to give a theme like that form is very difficult. Yeah, an image. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it requires a lot, of, a lot of thinking and a lot of assessing the ground floor of how you're making pictures. It's like, yeah, so is that theme best encapsulated by a narrative? Is it best encapsulated by a symbol? Is it better in black and white or is it better in color? Is it better representational or is it better abstract or you know, anywhere on the spectrum between those two? Um, is it better with dramatic light or low contrast light? Is it better with um, geometric shapes or is it better with sinuous and curvy shapes and it's just it, it, all the way it it re that theme if you let it reorients every single choice about how you would make the picture it close it will close yeah. some doors and open others yeah and that that process of asking about every aspect of the picture in light in through the lens of a theme that is composition that that composition in the grand sense right cuz people people get it in their heads that composition is like um shapes pointing at each other you know they they mm-hmm. that that's sort of like and and it is that right but that's the way it gets taught and talked about a lot mm-hmm. but i just want to highlight for you and for people who are listening that the choice between using sharp shapes and smooth shapes is also composition. The choice between using low contrast shapes and high contrast shapes is also composition. And in some sense, composing is everything that you're not putting in the picture as well, right? So it's it's just a much grander, more all encompassing thing than people tend to think it is. Um, yeah, I, I say this on stream 
quite often because people ask about composition a lot, but I don't really think it's something you can practice as a fundamental in isolation. It's like composition is what you do with everything else you know, and that's what makes it so difficult and challenging and not something that ever gets mastered. Yeah, I, it's it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Um, is all that making sense or am I just babbling? No, no, it really makes sense. I mean, it's been my experience with art. You know, one of the things that I always hear people talk about is, um, you know, how much art is like, you know, weightlifting. And I, it's, it's never felt like that to me. Like it's never, I've never had that experience. Like, um, not to say that weightlifting is, is, is all specific and straightforward, but, you know, I've always equated like learning to draw or making art like, way more like language. You know, like you, you get a bunch of words and you can learn the vocabulary and suffix and prefix and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, how someone communicates only happens in their attempt to communicate and to people and talk about the same thing differently using different kinds of words and pauses and you know there's all this sort of context in there and then there might be the cultural influence involved like yeah. it's, it's just really broad and um yeah no i've, I've trying to make full images and you know composition and whatnot it's yeah the more i try to make it a mathematical problem uh the less likely and able to communicate feeling at all right you know yeah, I, I 100% agree with your your analogy to language. Yeah, I think that's much more apt than something like sports or strength training or something like that, which does get said a lot. There's parts of there's parts of art that can you can make the analogy to weightlifting or something like that better, but in the in the larger sense, yeah, I like you, I, I disagree with that. In the larger sense, I, I think the analogy falls apart. I don't think it works. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, Mel. Well, do you wanna you wanna show us some pictures? Show me some pictures. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can I can show you one that I had just completed. Um, yeah, let's. And then I can show you the one that I'm working on that I need the uh, need the assistance with. Here we go. Nice. Oh, I don't think yeah, I saw so the that... finished version of this one. You didn't send me this, did you? The completely done oh, version. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not nice. The, not the fully, not the fully finished one. Nice, um, nice, nice. Yeah, no, this one, this one was challenging. It was, it was hard. And, you know, it's like I had to try and be confident with color and try to make the tattoos look like their tattoos. Um, try to get the proportions right, you know. And um, at some point, references kind of went out the window. And looking at my own body, looking at my own hands, trying to just figure stuff out, you know. Um, trying to do different materials you know we had talked about that before and i was wondering like what color can i even go with this gold and i was like oh wait a minute let me try to make it metallic let me throw on some like some gold in there and some you know cooler cooler tones as well and cool yeah no that's this is yeah this one this one took a long time <laughs> it took a whole month uh, whole month making this and that's yeah this amazing. is yeah kind of aligned to you know what we were talking about to where i just just simply had a feeling um, and I wanted to see if I could make the feeling into an image. Yeah. I, I, I just want to highlight that you spent a, a month on it. Cause for people in the audience who don't know you, um, mm -hmm. you, you only started your art journey relatively recently, you know? Um, yeah. That's, uh, 2021. Yeah, that's very that's very recent. You know, if we say that's three years, right? Which is mm -hmm. I mean, not really. This, we're only at the start of almost <laughs> um, of twenty twenty four here. So, it it you you and people haven't seen like your first pictures. I was lucky enough to see right. some of your very first pictures. Yes. Right, um, yes. <laughs> you've come a very long way, extremely fast, and there there's tons of reasons for that, but. Um, mm -hmm. From where I'm sitting, from my perspective, one of them is that you very early started finishing pictures. You would stay with oh, them yeah. for a very long time, which I think is something that a lot of people early on really struggle with, and I think it holds them mm -hmm. back. I, it's held me back, right? So could, could right. you just talk about that a little bit, your relationship yeah. to that? A thousand, a thousand percent. Um, you know, thank, thankfully... Um, you know, because I did get into it older, yeah, 2021. Um, so 
I think I had the benefit of knowing like what I would even want to make. You know what I mean? Because before I started drawing, I would just kind of imagine all these kinds of cool things I'd want to do or, or, or more like I wish I could see, you know, some cool creature or some cool this or some, or some whatever. And so when I, you know, got into starting to draw, I didn't, I wasn't doing the, you know, the, the cube exercises or the spheres or um, drapery to still life. I jumped directly to figure drawing, you know? Nice. And I was terrible at it. Terrible. I mean, literally the first, first week I, I struggled even doing stick figures. Even stick figures are really hard. Um, but I want to say about, you know, six months into me beginning to draw, I was finishing pictures. Like I would, I would take in the time. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't keeping track of how long I was spending, um, not until later, but even now in hindsight, I was like, oh yeah, I would, I would spend like, even as a beginner, spending three days on something is a long time. Like when you're just drawing, like you think you have to finish something in three hours, you know, or 20 hours into something, you know, with the pencil and, and all of that. And, um, you know, but I, I just didn't realize like that I was also learn. I wasn't just learning the fundamentals, but I was learning the fundamentals in the context of making finished image. So like that was just that was giving me a different kind of mileage than I thought I probably needed. You know, I just I assumed I had to do the um, you know the drills and all that kind of stuff. But I found that every time I did that, most of my energy would be gone. Mm-hmm. It would be it would be sucked up from that. And then I'd be too tired to make the image or like even worse, you just get bored of the image or, you know, you just want something else. Like you're just looking for something else that feels exciting. And, you know, so early on, I made it just a, a, a very specific choice to, to just like finish. Like even if I only finish, or if I only make one picture a month, it would be something fully finished that I spent all my time and really put my heart into that's great. And I, I think it has served you very well. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of it, it's one of the biggest problems with the self-taught online artist journey right now is that I think it overemphasizes volume by far. You know, I, I think it's far too concerned with volume. Uh, again, that that I believe that's a symptom of the way that we talk about art online uh sort of separate from the more traditional learning situations you know in if you go to if you go to a school it's like yeah they may drill you on volume but at the end of the at the end of the week you know at the end of the semester they need something to grade you on and they're going to want to grade you on a thing that you did your best on so they're giving you volume but they're also drilling you on finishing often and outside of any kind of accountability uh which is the the norm for people who are learning art online without friends or a teacher or a school system there's nothing forcing you to finish things right there's nothing forcing you to put something up on the blackboard or (laughs) or um just on the wall and say even if it's not perfect, like this is the best I could do in the time given, you know, like that the, right. I pushed it as much as I could. Um, and I think people don't understand how much they are losing out on by not doing that. Um, right. Fortunately right. There's, for there's you. There's so much. Yeah, sorry, I was going to say there's, there's so much you don't learn, like that you don't even encounter. You're purely just trying to like, learn it in an objective sense where you're just trying to only fine tune like the fundamentals yeah. you know but it's like when you actually have to finish something you know you you encounter all these things that you didn't even consider and then it reframes how you view the fundamentals and a lot of times you'll finish an image and it'll simplify a fundamental for you yes as opposed to it just staying in this weird abstract space yeah that's a great way to put it. Yeah, the f- finishing things, going all the way to the edge of your ability there, informs 
what actually matters right up front, right? Like pe when people ask me, how do I get fast, right? How do I make art faster? It's like, <laughs> you get fast by finishing very long, slow pictures. That's how you do it. Because yep. it, when, when, you, when you haven't spent enough time in the final, an initial line, a lay-in for a shape, anything like that, it means it doesn't it means something very different to you. It, it's like an abstraction for its own sake and it doesn't have a job to do. Right. When you when you spend enough time in the final, it teaches you what you actually need from a line. It teaches you what's going to hold up all the way to the end and what isn't. It's gonna teach you what's mm -hmm. sort of you just beautifying that particular step and what is actually a practical addition to the picture in the sketch phase and the value phase, things like that. Um, right. And there's just no substitute for that. You're never gonna get that, you're never gonna get that knowledge by accident doing millions of unfinished pictures. You need to finish some stuff. And I, yeah, I just think people who haven't done that, they have no idea the, the difference that it would make. And it's really not that, it's not like you need hundreds or thousands of finished pictures mm -hmm. to get the huge benefit of that. You need like a few dozen, you know, you, it, yeah. it's a it's a reasonable number um, that will make a very, very big difference. Yeah, no, I, I started getting good clarity after maybe like, like my, you know, 14th, 15th one where I'm like, okay, I think I'm starting to see what I actually like need <laughs> yes. and when it's needed. But even that is is very rare for someone when you say 14, it's like, mm -hmm. I can name very few artists who <laughs> right. two years into drawing, even where you are now, two going on, you know, three, mm -hmm. very few of them could could confidently say to me, here's 14 finished pictures, right? Maybe they're not perfect, right. but here's 14 that I made. That is a, it, it doesn't sound like a huge number, right? And it shouldn't, mm -hmm. it is very achievable for every artist out there. But in mm -hmm. practice, for most people, it is actually very, very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage people to climb that particular, let's not call it a mountain, but let's call it a hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. you'll be winded by the time you're at the top of the hill. Um, it, right. There is, it, it, it's hard to describe and, and, and hard, it would be hard to make people believe just how much they're missing out on by mm -hmm. not finishing pictures even early on in their journey. All right, let, let's talk more about uh, about this picture, if you don't mind. You want to tell us a little bit more about yeah. the process that you went through there? What made you make calls, like doing the tattoos and things like that? Just anything that comes to mind. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, so, like, the only, the only idea I had going into it is I just liked the idea of this figure um, holding its own head. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And even before then, like it was, there wasn't even going to be a skull. Like it was going to be like this, like a headless thing. Um, and then kind of as I was going along and making it, I liked the idea of like the face being very still and then the, the skull having some sort of expression. Mm -hmm. Even though ideally it probably should be backwards. Um, and then the tattoos... When, when I was thinking it started off as just a kind of cool idea, you know, with a lot of Polynesian tattoos and stuff like that, I just, I just feel like those are kind of cool looking, you know, and we see a lot of that in, in, in paintings and art in general. Mm -hmm. um, but then I kind of thought about, well, um, you know, for me, it's like um, the way, the way you think of yourself, the way you, you talk about yourself or how you project yourself in the world. I kind of equated that to the tattoos on this image you know just like it's like whatever whoever this is whatever they believe in themselves they, they've got a tattoo on there it's just kind of like a you know like a self kind of ridicule cool cool uh, yeah i i want to just reassociate again on some of the symbolic stuff that's happening mm -hmm. here and again i'm just rorschach blotting it right i don't i yeah. don't i don't these are difficult conversations to have without 
I don't know. I'm, I'm always cautious to affect people's <laughs> thinking about their symbols too much, but I think right. in in the learning process, it's it is important to become aware of like what you may be crafting unconsciously, you know. Right. So right. Um, just feel free to ignore everything I'm saying is what I'm saying. But um, <laughs> yeah, so well, I, well, I like that the that the skull has an expression and the face doesn't. You said maybe it should be reversed and. I don't know. I, I don't feel like that is necessarily yeah. the better call. I, I, I think it might be right. more interesting this way. Oh, no, yeah, no, that's what I figured. Like, at first, I was like, it probably should be reversed. But then I thought, no, I think it's more interesting for the face to be pretty deadpan. Yeah. You know, and the skull to not. Yeah. So, so the skull is an interesting thing. Well, it's definitely got, you know, yeah. memento mori right. qualities, right? You know, yeah. a, anytime you see a skull... Uh, thematically, it's always reminding you of death and and all of that. But um, you know, I just kind of want to want to broaden the scope of that symbology here. Uh, the fact that it's not bone is always an interesting choice, right? I remember when you were right. sending me some in progress stuff. We talked about picking a material and then sort of color combinations right. there and things yeah. like that. And yeah, yeah, there's the cool factor, but um it not being bone, uh, it being an object that we're very familiar with and we're also familiar with it in a particular material, um, mm -hmm. does imply something to the viewer, that it's an artifact, that it's been crafted, mm -hmm. created, that something um, maybe magical has happened, right? right. Um, again, w w when you take it the magical route, it sort of starts to imply a story, narrative mm -hmm. right but um right. It, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that but changing materials um is a very interesting thing for me in drafting i like to do it because um mm -hmm. the um when you change the material of something especially something really familiar you remove a lot of the intuitive demands for verisimilitude from the audience for me right. that opens other very interesting doors like if I'm painting a figure or if I'm drawing a figure and I draw it or paint it white or in the case of drawing higher key so that it feels like a marble statue, I could draw the figure such that, you know, if you caught me in the middle of the process, you would believe that I'm, imagine I'm doing a sketch of a figure and I'm halfway through, right? And I'm laying in mm -hmm. arms, legs, the position, all that. A viewer who steps over my shoulder could believe that I'm drawing a real person right? There's not enough information there to disprove that it's a real person. But then all of a sudden with them over my shoulder, I can break off an arm and give it a jagged craggly edge where I broke it. And now they're like, oh, that's a statue, right? And it's yes. all right. that changed was the implication from that fracture point. And I can then challenge the viewer and say, it's not a statue, it's still a person. <laughs> and, and then they're like, well, you know, you start confusing them and you start asking more involved artistic questions. No, th th those little implications of material have a huge effect on the viewer. Right. Um, and then you can play with those with theme, right? You know, if you're, if you're drawing figures and cleaving them off like statues, but you're insisting that they're not statues, right? Again, in a drawing, um, uh, imagine that there was local value changes on the hair right? So mm -hmm. on a marble statue, my hair, which is black, would be white, just like my skin, right? And so would the pupils of my eyes and my eyebrows, they would all be sculpted in form, right? So mm -hmm. if I add that back in, I've got value changes that are typical of a full color rendition in my face and head, but my arm is still cleaved off like a statue. What does that mean to the viewer, right? What, what implications does that have for their interpretation of the theme and the emotionality. And I know that that was a long rant, but all of that to say that yeah. picking odd materials for things that we are very familiar with, I think is actually a powerful image making tool and opens it up- It the narrative. Yeah. yeah, it changes a lot of things about the narrative and the mm -hmm. kinds of themes that you might be interpreted to um, mm -hmm. be portraying to the viewer. Um, yeah. So again, I don't know what it means here. I'm just Rorschach <laughs> blotting. Um, the horns are interesting. It's always interesting when something like horns, which are typically um, 
kind of scary or aggressive looking sort of go the way of Baroque filigree and get a little bit more beautiful <laughs> and ornamental. Right. Um, so the horns, the fact that they're Baroque, the abstracted material, uh, making it feel like it's made with intent, the skull, all of that to me adds up to this feeling like ritual, right? So it right. doesn't, it, 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 to me, it reeks specifically of a ritual. This person has mm -hmm. been put through something or is going through something with intent, right? This is a vision right. quest. This is a spiritual threshold. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that what they are underneath is gazing at the persona that they present at the world mm -hmm. is a very literal encapsulation of that. But again, right. I want to be clear that the way that you have either consciously or unconsciously arranged the thematic elements here makes me interpret this as an experience full of intent, of purpose, rather yeah. than this is an accidental magical thing that happened to this no, no. figure. Yeah. yeah, no, you definitely, um, you know, in my, in my head there, yeah, very much intent, intently, you know. Good, great. So um, if if that was your, and again, I don't need answers on, was that your intention? Yeah. Is that exactly what you got? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to point out the way that someone might view those decisions that in the moment might not have felt suffused with everything that I just said, right? But there's no stopping the fact that at the end, they will get interpreted somehow. I didn't know I felt that way about this picture until I said it just now. I mean, I, I discovered that as I was speaking it. But before I started talking about it, I was just kind of like, you know, I had a misty fog colored interpretation of this picture. But um, mm -hmm. it's clear that I did feel that way about it under something because how how else would all of that uh, uh, have emerged with cogency otherwise? You know, right. it had to be under there somewhere. The tattoos um, go along with that ritualistic feeling as well for me. I mean, right. you know, get, getting a tattoo is a ritual. Having multiple yes. shows that you have returned to that ritual over and over and over again. It's a painful exactly. experience which a lot of slow. rituals are. Yeah, slow and painful, which which mm -hmm. is typical of many spiritual rituals and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's also reinforcing the ritual aspect for me, for sure. Yeah, no. And so, it's, uh, it's cool. It's nice. Like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really ask many people, you know, what they feel when I'm looking at it. I kind of just try and capture the feeling as direct and fully as I can without trying to say this is what it is, you know, like in the picture, just try to make it some it's like a frame, you know, again, it would be like a, this, this still frame in this ritual that has this whole other context behind it. You're just looking at like this one part of it and like trying to put information in there that it also is serving the form, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, and, and again, I I don't um, I don't think we need to say with any certainty that that's what this picture is about is yes, right right and I, I i'm always i'm always loath to give interpretations of pictures outside of a particular mm -hmm. context because they really color it for people mm -hmm. right like what once they've heard an interpretation it's hard for them that's to get it is. out of their head but um mm -hmm. i i'm doing it in this context because we're in a learning context and i'm trying to help you and I think that this mm -hmm. is one of the, this is one of the things an artist has to go through to learn. Mm -hmm. You need to hear how your pictures are landing with people, right. because that will unconsciously make you more aware of what your impulsive decisions might mean when you're working on mm -hmm. the next one, right? And for anyone out there who doesn't get that a lot, uh, I I would advise you find a friend who you got to be very careful right i mean like you and me are friends yes. you know we've we've had this 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 um this helping relationship for a while you know i've taught you for a while mm -hmm. so we know we know we can do this well but for right. 
anyone who's looking for this kind of thing in their practice, be very selective about who you show your pictures to in a very sort of open way like this. Um, because the same way that your pictures affect people um, in ways that they might not understand until they say it, right? Their interpretations will affect you in very deep ways, usually. So you don't want to show, you don't want to just, so don't bring someone into the process just because you're close to them, right? Like your mom may right. not be the right person to show your pictures to just because she's your mom and she really cares, right? She has a lot of, she's invested in you in different ways and she has a lot of other, you know, a lot of other conditioning factors over how she views you and what you're making, right? Um, okay. Same with your your dad, your brother, whoever. Like it, it, it's not a given that they're the best person for crits just because they're family or they're close for, to you or something like that. Um, probably more important than that is just because someone else is good at art doesn't mean they're the right person to critique you, 100%. right? Because they're... Yeah their skillfulness and their ease in their process does not mean inherently that they align with your temperament and your themes and the things that you are focusing on in art, right? It, it right. There's every kind of focus to have in art. And Mel, for example, if he was showing this to another super skillful artist who is just off Mel's wavelength, Instead of having that conversation, they just would have been like, well, it's not colorful enough. You know, and it's like they they <laughs> yeah. they might be one of the top 10 people in the world at color. So they're going to mm -hmm. focus on that. And they think that that is just something that has to be good in a picture or else the picture is not good. Right. And they may be right in their part of the world. But that doesn't mean that that's the note that needs to happen to this picture or that that's the interpretation that needs to happen to this picture. So. There, there's all sorts of shapes and formulations that that could take, but I just want to point out to people like your your close group of people who will give you critique and who can guide you on stuff. It just because someone's great at art doesn't mean they're in that group. That that doesn't mean that they're the right person to to talk to about those things. So you find people who are on your wavelength, who understand where you're headed, who want you to go far, but to go far in your way, right? And and are willing to sort of, at least I think this is important, they, they should prioritize your ideas before theirs. You know, they should be willing to let go, let go of their ideas and really hear yours out, even if they don't agree with them, you know? So that's hard for a lot of people to find, but I, I think as much as anybody out there can bear to do it, it's important. And you, you should have some some people to show to show your pictures to who can get in there deep with you. Um, all right, Mel, you wanna show me another? Yeah, so the, uh, the one I'm currently on um, is, uh, is this guy here. Nice. I, yeah, I've, you know, I've been in a figure kick for, you know, since I, started drawing that's like my main thing um you know in the last few months it's just been me dealing with like flesh and all that and um again i still wanted to engage with figures but i wanted to just completely change just the texture in general and i was like well let me just go with trees and let me get two trees that have different texture to them you know one is smooth and one's more jagged and you know, I've been trying to compose the image and what it means while also dealing with a sort of texture that I've, I've never really engaged with. Like any time I've drawn trees, it's just been silhouette and just implication, but not actually trying to figure out like how to draw like bark and, and, and lighting it well. And, and then also seeing like, how can I apply that to the anatomy, you know? And so that's been like, that's been my, my, my trouble here, you know? Really cool. Yeah. And it's cool to see like a new, a new kind of thing from you, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. So, so you said, so you said your trouble, try to be a little more 
specific? What what so far is troubling you about it? So so what I what I found was um like even lighting it, you know, lighting it is is, a, is you know I'm not to say that I'm good at lighting people to a specific degree, but I'm like confident in it. You know, like just you know, people are pretty lower contrast and sometimes you can get some high contrast here and there depending on the, the lighting or the pose or whatever um but even then it's just like a lot of that a lot of that smooth rendering that you get out you know and then every now and then it's tertiary forms and whatnot but um you know going to trees there's there's just a lot of information yeah. you know and and that, that's kind of partly why i even decided to go that route because I, I love um you know I think you and I are, are kind of in the same line where if I can do a lot of surface detailing and like texture, like I love that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like that, that makes me want to finish the image. You know, a lot of people really incentivize for, you know, you got to do the big stuff and then, and then make your brush smaller. And it's like, I mean, I literally started here without having anything and just went straight to rendering <laughs> yeah. went straight to getting all the form modeling without even, indicating the general shape of stuff i just went for it you know yeah. and, and same thing with like down here in, in the shadows um it's just the, the part that i'm having trouble with is trying to really maintain depth and i don't you know i don't want to lose form i don't want to flatten things out um I, I also want to make sure that while it's abstract and a little strange that it's still readable that it can still look like two figures just maybe not on the nose like i just want to imply things on my art more so than make it like flat out um yeah it's just it's been juggling a lot of these different things um like definitely definitely the lighting in general has been um, has been a little tough Got it. i don't really have you know i don't have specific references this, at this point the only reference yeah I how would are, you well, actually, <laughs> yeah actually what i did do is i i went out into the world and i took pictures it's like Good. 20 30 pictures of trees like in person Good. Um, and I went. I went different days, so I got different lighting scenarios, and like those have been like the crux of my reference. When I would um, try to get a lot of this, you know, a lot of this information, you know, a lot of these kinds of things in here, it's just like these photos I've got. Great, that's great. Um, let's take a look at it. All right, so let's clarify some things. So, you say this is two figures. That's how you think of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got right, right. we've got a face over here in red here. Mm -hmm. This is one figure. That's his arm. That's mm -hmm. his head. Yes. And then let me do a blue. This is another figure. This arm. Yeah. This is his back. It's just like putting on to him. This is his and butt. Legs. Legs. And you can't see this one's face in this composition, no. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it would be somewhere back here. If it even had a face, it would be somewhere back there. Okay. Right. I got it. All right. So we're trying to entwine them like that. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. Now that I've clarified that. And what is this circle that we've got going on here? Is that just a... So I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to put there. I don't know if I wanted to put like leaves or flowers or even like a moon there. <laughs> I'm still mm -hmm. trying to figure out what that... That's going to be. I like the idea of a moon. Yeah, it could be could be all sorts of things. It's interesting that it's like a mm -hmm. a perfect circle that's mm -hmm. slugged in right now. <laughs> but that yeah, but, yeah. but I understand your intuitions there. I mean, everything everything else is sort of very high energy, very crinkly, craggly, right? So you're looking mm -hmm. for a moment of peace, a moment of rest, somewhere in yes. there. Which people like you and I who like to make really high detail pieces, it's like we got to hunt for stuff like that. No doubt. Right. Which is um is hard. Is hard. All right. So let's think this through. So the trees have a very particular like anatomy. You know, that is their own mm -hmm. anatomy. And it's interesting to try to blend that with human anatomy. Um, trees are really a lot about like um dispersing weight. I'm not I'm not a I'm not super versed in this, but you can see it. You can see it when you look at trees in reality. Yeah. And this is just like overall drawing stuff that like I'm not expecting you to go back and change your mm -hmm. design here. 
to align with this, right. just like to address the theme in general. So it's like, if you have a really thick tree, like a big oak or okay. something like that, and it has these huge branches coming out, like on the scale of that, that feels like a huge branch, right? Something like an oak will have branches coming out of it that really could be trees on their own. They could be their own separate trees, right? Right. So the size of those branches always makes them take the weight somewhere. And usually that's in the form of a burl, right? One of the big knots in the tree. And I I, I wish I had I have found like a pocket, like this is the absolute anatomy of burls, but I don't have that. I'm not sure if they have that, but it's always, they're either right underneath the branch Someone who like actually understands the physiology of trees would probably be like, that's not why burls form, but just from a visual perspective, it's like there's always some kind of thickening right under um, a big branch like that. Or, and th this is more what I like to do, um, there's like a, a burl between two really big, two really big thick ones like that, like it will strengthen the joint. The tree will naturally strengthen the joint between these two huge structures. And then you get kind of like this waving energy. It's a natural structure, <laughs> you know, to say the least, it's a right. natural it's, structure. It's a tree, so trees have that kind of um, <clears throat> anatomy, right? They're, right? they're always trying to take the weight of the bigger things. So, um, mm -hmm. There, there might be a bit more of that to be done. Like you've got a burl mm -hmm. over here on right. the left side, but maybe something this mm -hmm. huge. Um, I can get, I can get one there. Oh man. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, it's not like I, I need something like this that is totally fantastical to follow it. But sometimes there's like right. a, a kind of beauty to like alluding to those natural anatomies yes. and structures and things like that. It's also worth it to think about when you're designing a big tree like that, That um, and you saw it in some of those diagrams that I did, a really strong, tree, like a thin tree, you know, they'll have thin branches going off that way. And then as you go up the tree, the branches kind of start angling. Kind of, they tend less to stick out completely at a horizontal, right? Okay. Um, on a lot of trees, mm -hmm. but uh, a really thick, strong tree, again, like an oak tree or like a willow or something like that, they will mm -hmm. have tree-sized branches that can go fully horizontal. They, they can like totally <laughs> right. break um, like that. And they'll do, they'll, they, they will also angle up as well once they get up to the top. But those, those ones midway to half, midway towards the bottom or at the bottom of the tree, they will just make angles that you would never expect. You'd think everything has to go mm -hmm. up, but even these huge gargantuan branches can just go off at a complete horizontal. Um, and right. you know, that that's why they break off a lot. And a lot of the times they drag on the ground and things like that. But design wise, since you're doing a very thick, strong tree, you can ask questions mm -hmm. like, do I want that to just keep going up like that or you know since mm -hmm. you're not really too committed to that is there a better no. a design solution you want more like you could make big mm -hmm. arterial departures like this right 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 that are oh, more yeah. following on the horizontal you have a lot of options like that that still make sense because mm -hmm. you've got the big tree um hmm. kind of looks like a heart when i do yeah. that <laughs> That's cool. Not like a Valentine's Day heart, but like a real heart. Um, <laughs> right, actual heart. When it comes to roots down here, what do you what are you thinking? Are you thinking of just fading things off like this, or are you going to try to come to a like a concrete solution? I think I was um, going to come out to like a wider, possibly like a wider, you know, bottom there. Um, or I was thinking, yeah, something like that. Is... And do like roots? Were you thinking of doing real roots, or were you gonna... doing? I was thinking of doing roots, or I was even thinking of um, you know bringing the lakes down and out a bit further, and then having it like submerged in water. That was another idea. That hmm, doing water, and that could be really cool because then the reflection. Draw the reflections. And I just the... I just have to figure that out. You know, I didn't look 
that far yet, but it's something that I had in my head you know, yesterday. Well, compositionally, it would be really nice because the the ref, letting the reflection fade out, I think, will feel more yeah. satisfying than what you have right now, where just like these very mm -hmm. concrete, very robust forms vignette off to nothing. I mean, you know, it's a look. Right. It's not like you can't make that work, but sort of the emotions mm -hmm. of those forms, concrete, very solid trees, they okay. fight the idea of vignetting, whereas the reflections, I think it's much more natural for that to just fade off and just sit on the page on its own. And then, so, um, yeah, the only, the only thing about the water is that that being, again, it'd be just a new thing for me, right? But I feel like that's something, that's kind of why I want to do it, yeah. you know? Yeah, uh, you, you, an idea there. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to play around with what is a what does a reflection look like in one of your pictures, right? But right. Um, you know, that's a fun adventure to go on and mm -hmm. you're you're working on a monochrome piece here, so that simplifies mm -hmm. things considerably for a, a first stab. You, know, you can you <laughs> yeah. can you're really just playing with um the specular reflections and whatever darkening yeah is going on in the reflection. Just remember that, right. um, I mean, you don't have to follow this stuff, but this is just like the physics mm -hmm. of it. Like a reflection yeah, that's, that's is, I mean. a reflection is always slightly darker than what it's reflecting, mm -hmm. right? E even, a, sure. even a perfect mirror, if you look at it closely, is always a couple clicks darker than the room it's reflecting even if it's a perfect mirror, because the light still had to bounce and light always loses mm -hmm. intensity on a bounce. So perfect mirrors, still lakes, anything like that, it's still the reflection of an object is always going to be darker than the object itself. Even if it seems step back, they're both quite light and they look almost mm -hmm. the same. But um, I don't know, our eye is very sensitive to that. And the specular reflections, I mean, just remember that the speculars will be, it, it also depends how you, are you going to do a blurry reflection or are you going to do a crisp, perfect reflection? Yeah, I, think I'd, I think I'd want a blurry. Yeah, so if you're going to do blurry, then you're implying that the water is a little bit more turbulent, right? Uh, water, water reflects more perfectly the more still it is, right? Mm -hmm. So... If you want it blurrier, you are implying more turbulent water. Right. So it either has some action or it has wind yes. blowing across it or something like that. And um, and it, if you do it like that, then you're relying more on like the, that. then that means it'll have wavelets in it because it's a little bit more turbulent and you can sort of let the little specular reflections define the wavelets where they go up and down and create little furrows like that. But those are just things to consider um, when you go in there and actually try it out. But yeah, as usual, look at reference. Go, you know, if you've never painted this before, go look at, you know, various mm -hmm. photos of trees reflected in water and all that. But those are the basic physics ideas you want to have in mind. It's going to be darker than the actual object, yeah. and the the more crisp the reflection, the more still the water, the more turbulent the water, the blurrier the reflection. Right. So let's leave that off since we're not sure where we're going to do go with that. Um, let's talk about some of the textural aspects of things like tree bark. So tree bark, this is a very tricky thing because to me, tree bark is more, it's less a texture and, you know, the, the tree bark is the surface, right? And what's really interesting about a tree is its, its, its growth structure, right? So tree bark is a texture, but I think it, it should always be overlaid over the, I don't know how to describe it, the tree material, the object of tree, like how, what, how do trees form and how do they get shaped and things like that? Like, um, I have an assignment in Form for Imagination where people do the textured cylinder, right? And mm -hmm. I usually don't give this note on it because, um, you know, we're looking at something, we're looking at, an, we have a narrow focus on that assignment. But um, something that people do there is they'll do a perfect cylinder and then they'll draw 
and render tree texture over it. And you can render the hell out of the tree bark, right? But it will always look weird because it doesn't have the the way trees grow and it doesn't have the overall secondary shapes of tree. So if it's just a pristine cylinder with tree bark laid over it, it's going to look like a, a material sample in Substance Painter or something like that, like a 3D modeling tool. Right. Um, whereas you would get more bang for your buck if you did the twisting. Right. That trees do. If you get right up close on a tree and you follow it from like its roots up, it's like each root grows into an important subform that flows up the trunk of the tree a lot of the time. And the further it gets from the roots, the subtler and subtler and subtler the shape gets. And most trees, or a lot of trees, especially the trees we're interested in drawing, twist. They twist a lot, right? They don't just grow straight up. They're heading towards the sun, but they're twisting as they go. Let me knock this back a little bit. So even if you were doing it like a cylinder assignment, mm -hmm. there's the cylinder, right? But you don't let it be a perfect cylinder. You pick some important subforms, right? These big wiggly wagglies is what I'm talking about here. So if you look at this wiggly waggly, yeah. this half cylinder, this half cylinder there, right? The idea is that mm -hmm. that is born down in the root. Gotcha. And it flows all the way up the tree where they depart each other, you get those crinkly, almost fabric-like stretching subforms that occur between the roots. And you see how they're rotating? It's like implying mm -hmm. this twist, how we're sort of like, we are drawing what's going on behind the trunk as well. Now, I hope it's clear how, I, I don't have the time to sit here and render a perfect cylinder that has a perfect tree bark texture on it, right? But imagine right. one there. And I hope it's clear how even a really polished one will never have the tree-like effect that that does, right? right? That, that, right. Has, that has no texture on it, but more important than the texture is, again, there's no good word for it. Like, the material tree, mm -hmm. which includes right. the way it grows, its iconic twisting, rotation, the way that the 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 way that the subforms are born from something that makes sense. So you know, like I said, the roots mm -hmm. start down here, they flow up, and they create these like these furrows along the tree. And as I said, if we continued the tree all the way up, let me move this. If we continued the tree all the way up, each one of these furrows would fade off and eventually somewhere up here, you might not be able to identify them anymore. They would sort of become a, a flat, a flatter trunk, but um, they would actually still be there ever so suddenly. And like, if we were going to really try to emphasize that we might we'd probably be drawing a different picture at that point right and i'm not trying to set you on a different right, right. picture but i do think that some thinking like this can mm -hmm. inform us even as we render right this stuff so feels like this area goes in like deep yeah. into the tree is that correct yes okay so that's nice you know because to me this chest feels like it comes out towards the viewer, yeah. so there's a nice contrast there. I think that's a very good design. So we could have it be deep in there and then sort of pop That's forward on us. Right. So it could get take the weight, you know, get some furrows, wrinkles there. It. I'm gonna draw contour lines here just to make it obvious. You know, it's boom. Right, what's going on? Bending towards us this way. The energy can sweep 
down, down, down. And again, I'm hunting for that twist that mm-hmm. trees have, and I'm trying to have the roots create the subforms that are going to go all the way up the tree. And we can hunt for that even here, right? Like this right mm-hmm. now, this arm feels to me like this. If right. it, it feels like it has the texture, but it doesn't have the material tree, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a difficult drawing question, but let's see if we can twist things up more, so. Right, which I definitely, yeah, I definitely struggle with I'm also trying to like, how I get the deltoid there and oh, all true. kind of stuff. Oh no, you're asking all the right questions, babe. I mean, you're setting yourself up for hard stuff for sure, but <laughs> let's see if I can use my tree anatomy stuff to kind of make it feel more tree-like, right? right? right. So I'm gonna hunt for subforms to feed in, right? Just like the roots, so. Mm-hmm. Pulling gotcha. in, pulling in. Let it twist, let it twist. Let's lose the smoothness mm-hmm. along the contours, but make it unsmooth. Start, start to twist a bit there. Yeah. yeah. Half tone area is also super important. So we're going to make sure that the nature of our material is happening on the contour, on the in the half tone. Notice that in yours, the half tone is very smooth, unbroken up. It has the has the lines of tree texture cutting through it, but if I just paint those out. nothing changes, right? It's the same overall design. So when we're trying to imply something intense, like tree bark or something like that, we don't want that. We want to deeply integrate it into the halftone so that something very important would be lost if you were to paint it out. Right. That will help hit the viewer over the head with that. And I said I had like a lot of the dark dark areas in there because I was gonna draw some branches with you know an eraser. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great idea. I mean you're making you're making the absolute right call there. Yeah, I think I was I was definitely playing it really safe with the arm. I was just like, how do I well, yeah, no, it this still reads well and also reads more like a tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's those secondary forms, you know, every, the, the, pri- the primary forms are like how you get form, how you get it to feel 3D. And then the secondary forms are where anatomy exists, where the nature right. of a particular form language exists, right? They, they contribute less to the feeling of three-dimensionality, but they contribute mm-hmm. more to a feeling of texture in a particular material. Gotcha. And then the real asshole about something like tree bark is that there's all sorts of like crazy fractal detail that like yeah. would be would be too much to try to it'll just make it ugly if I add it here, but like there's all these little um local value variations, like there's lighter parts, yes. darker parts, little bits of moss built up yeah. on different things. So I'm rushing that here, like so it makes the picture. Part. Yeah, it is. It's I rush it here. If I rush it here, which I'm I'm doing right now with this little annoying noisy brush, it makes it look worse because I'm not doing care not doing it carefully, right? But it the devil's in the details with a lot of stuff, right? You don't have to do it. it it'll just if you don't add that stuff, it'll feel more like what we were talking about before, where it's a statue of a tree. It's a tree made of marble rather than a real tree, you know. Right. So if we compare that with what you had, mm-hmm. right? Again, yours feels, it feels like a limb, it feels like an arm, yes. but it doesn't feel much like a tree arm, right. whereas, whereas that I think feels more, right? 100%. And, and you could carry that, that anatomical thinking 
through to the leg, the arm, everything that you're going to try to make mm-hmm. more tree-like, right? And you you can see how, just like I showed here, right? Roots mm-hmm. all the way up and reacting around things. I have lines like that going through. Like if I follow this one, let me make sure this isn't on the same layer, sorry. If I follow this one, It's like it snakes all the way through the arm form. Yeah. So choices like that can be made everywhere. And that's not to say that you can't have moments like this, right? Because I like this right. moment, right? Like the, this to me is like when a tree gets um, burnt out or like when the whole yeah, tree. Like beat up. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the whole tree gets very old. It's holding so much weight that all the all the grace is lost and it just, mm-hmm. it's just really struggling to hold the weight, mm-hmm. right? Um, It's just crinkly forms kind of everywhere. So I like that. And it's not to say you can't have moments like that or that you shouldn't have moments like that, but it's like... um, Variety. Yeah, variety. These make more sense when there's more stuff that more of the other type, more graceful stuff, more traditional tree-like instructions around it. Or at least that would be the, (laughs) the design theory. Feeling my mind expanding. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. Trees are trees are fucked up, man. Damn trees. Are fucked up. <laughs> it, was, it was so fun, but yeah, definitely crazy. You had a you had another question. You had mentioned something about like overall lighting. What, what what's your thinking there, or, or what else is bothering you about the picture? What else can I help you with? Um. Yeah, I guess I just want to make sure that the and it's still very readable. You know. Um, you know, I'm trying to get a lot more value across all my drawings and stuff. And, you know, I feel like I learned a lot from the last thing I just finished, even though it was in color, but I needed, I needed value everywhere, right? Because, you know, rendered skin and had all different um, sorts of hues in there. And so this one, I'm going back to black and white. And, um, you know, if you remember some of, like, a lot of my earlier stuff was really just black, pure white. I hardly ever had the mid-tone. So I'm just trying to get a lot of mid-tone and across all, you know, across the whole image, basically. Um, and then I can always go back in and paint the lights. Um, but my question is just like, just overall, like, is it just readable? You know, like, was the lighting is it making sense? <laughs> Cause I'm just, I just been going, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've been trying to figure it out as I go. So what you have so far lighting wise, mm-hmm. it makes sense to me. I mean, it's doing mm-hmm. the work that you need for the individual pieces, but the question will be, how do you arrange it? Um, across the whole tree once everything's right. in, right? Something's there. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know, we've talked about this before, but, like, sometimes the way to finish a picture is actually to move backwards rather than moving yes. forwards on certain areas. Just right. taking work out. Like, right, right. you're going to add a bunch of stuff to this picture. So have mm-hmm. your top five. What's actually the five most important parts of this picture? Is it, it's this face... Is it going to be this hand that you've implied, this hand, this arm, and what? Maybe this leg, right? It, yeah. it could be anything, but no, those are my top five. And then once you've picked them, ask yourself, do I really want that much work on that knot? You know, do I really right. want that knot to have so much energy, so much dynamics, mm-hmm. so much little detail on it, right? And mm-hmm. with with what I showed you here, right? Mm-hmm. You can still finish that knot without adding all sorts of high frequency detail that is equivalent to what's going on on that head on the left. Right, right. right? If yeah, you, that, was, that was one of the first on my list of knocking back <laughs> was the knot. Yeah, so I, I think mm-hmm. stuff like that is going to be important and you can use the lighting for that too. It's mm-hmm. like it it can be a question of both removing the high frequency detail and also lowering mm-hmm. the contrast in that area, letting that area be a little bit more grayed out. Um, right. So to just to make that even more clear, like right now, mm-hmm. everything except these two areas, or I guess one mm-hmm. area, is rendered with the same level of contrast 
basically, mm -hmm. right? Like th this feels like it has the same value range as this, um, mm -hmm. as this. So when you're organizing the piece, sometimes you just need to paint that way, right? I feel like I need yeah. to draw and paint that way a lot of the time, but mm -hmm. you m just need to remember that near the end of the process, you might need to go mm -hmm. back and de-weight all of that stuff right. and, and address the contrast. So, you know, just to right. do it in a very gruesome fashion here is just like scrubbing over mm -hmm. a whole area like that. So that it's happening in a much more compressed range. All the detail is yes. still there, right? It's just much right, more. Right, but it, it's just compressed now. Yeah, highly compressed when compared to that. Then you can leave that mm -hmm. part to sort of leap out. And you're gonna have to make mm -hmm. calls, you know, the hard, the hard thing about something like a tree that has so much detail is that you're gonna have to make calls like that absolutely everywhere, you know? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. I see, these are, these, that's a full negative shape, right? That's a cutout that's in a, the tree? That's negatives. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. I, had, I hadn't read that at first. I thought those were just unrendered areas, but now I see it, that's cool. Oh. That's, a, <laughs> that's a really cool <laughs> idea. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you might need to. Yes. I think you might need to repeat that somewhere, because some somewhere else. Yeah, sometimes an interesting note like that, mm -hmm. like those ne full negative cutouts there. So, yeah. Sometimes they can feel a little. Um, they feel a little off if there's not a ghost of them somewhere else. Right. It's like you need to. Mm. Sometimes you need to circulate the idea just a touch. Don't let it compete, right? But yes, maybe like um. Maybe like over here, you could just get one. Right. One of the sweeps. One of those, one of those, okay. Yeah, just, just so that it repeats there and maybe another one down here somewhere whenever you're mm -hmm. doing the roots. I, I, I find that if you do something like that, it often helps okay. avoid what just happened where I didn't read that until much later. Yeah. If you, mm -hmm. if you hit me with it one, two, three times, it makes it much more likely that I'll get it right away as soon as I look at the picture, mm -hmm. you know, because that's a cool idea. And I think that that should be, should definitely be emphasized. Yeah, I, I think that'll, I think those will be your main challenges on the lighting because mm -hmm. since it's a solo object, the overall lighting choice, like left, right, you're not worried about a cast shadow. You can kind of get away with mm -hmm. anything as far as overall lighting direction and you can design the shadow shapes however you want to sort of obscure areas and things like that so yeah i think you're kind of good on on overall shadow shape design it's really a question of flagging the features and controlling the mm. contrast would you or what's what's an idea you'd go about if you wanted to place a moon a moon in that center i don't know why that's a Still, it's all in my mind, but it is something that I think could be interesting. It, it's a difficult thing to, mm -hmm. it would be a difficult thing to integrate right there. You could make it bigger, and put in the background like I did here and have it be a sort mm -hmm. of graphic shape, but then just be aware that it's going to drag a lot of attention to this thing, mm -hmm. right? So to the thing, which I do want to kind of fade out. Yeah, we think, you know, at this point, well, you know, we want mm -hmm. we want it to be about them. Um, if you didn't want to have it up there, if you want if you were if you want to follow that intuition of it being there in the middle, it's it's almost more like you would need to um It's like if that's the moon, I'm just thinking out loud here. Um Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Maybe instead of it being awkwardly nestled in there, like the tree just clearly grows around it. Right, right, right. That's what I was thinking of. I just have um, the actual circle you're seeing there is just on another layer. Right. So just like, just like wondering what I, what I want to do there. But yeah, something like that. Something. I think I want. So if you're gonna do that, it's like you're implying it's. Now you're really implying an environment, right? Because now it's it feels right. like it's back there. I would definitely have negative shape around it like I have here, right? Like mm -hmm. you, would, you would need to make a pretty clear window, right? The, the tighter yeah. 
the tighter the tree is in on it, the more awkward it can seem. Mm -hmm. um, right. There's other design solutions there, but you'd probably want a clear window. And then, yeah, you're really implying an environment. It's almost like you're in a swamp and you want to see yeah. a little of the water back there, getting like a mangrove kind of a vibe. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're, we've got a real low angle, so we're actually looking really like up at the tree. Right. You know, clouds, nighttime clouds or something like that. You get what I'm saying? It's like the moon is like just I cresting do. the horizon. We're looking through it at the horizon. So yeah, it's really implying much more of a an environment, right? Which might not necessarily be the kind of picture you're trying to make in this case. Mm -hmm. If we just have the moon sitting right there, just right amongst mm -hmm. all these other forms, just this white sphere, it might not necessarily feel, it might not give you it might not give you the exact immediate punch that you're hoping for from it. You know? mm -hmm. Right, right. No, these are these are problems I'm excited to to solve. Yeah, it's it's going to be a really cool piece. I mean, yeah, I know you do good work. It'll be cool, and it'll be cool to see a. I love trees. I love trees. So <laughs> it'll be cool to see a tree mm -hmm. from you. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it has a lot of potential. I think it could be an awesome piece. Um, yeah, yeah, what definitely. else, Mel? Any other questions on it? No, not really. Not really. Because it's, you know, even though I spent hours on it, it's, it's still pretty early, you know, because I'm basically designing while I'm rendering and figuring out like what the image is, you know? Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. The, the problem with rendering as you go is that, or like you said, starting in one small area, getting mm -hmm. stuck into it, and then sort of spreading out. The problem the reason that's a problem for most people is that mm -hmm. they're not willing to go back and fix the errors that that produces right. and to be patient with right, it. Right. If you're willing to actually fix the stuff that goes wrong because of that, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just no, I, 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 I clear out whole sections. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, f for you, I I know you'll actually do it and follow through. So fuck yeah. it. Draw, draw however keeps you excited for the piece. That's the most right. important thing. All right, buddy. Well, I hope that that was helpful for you. Yeah, absolutely was, man. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, yeah, so keep going on it, and uh, I'll be happy to see it as it goes along. Oh, and I did want to say, keep um, keep going out and looking at trees. Like, just yeah. don't... It, it's good to do at the beginning of the process, for sure, but I think mm -hmm. the drawing as you draw stuff like this, the drawing teaches you what you don't know. It shows you yes. where your gaps are. So then on the next mm -hmm. walk, the next tree you look at, where lucky trees are all over the place, the next tree mm -hmm. you look at, your mind will automatically start looking at it through the lens of the new void you have found, mm -hmm. and it'll start filling in more information. So keep, um, right. keep walking, keep looking at trees, keep taking more photos of them, like keep that conversation going with nature. And see if, see if now the stuff that I taught you here about the subforms, see if now that mm -hmm. you've heard it and sort of had it diagrammed a little bit, see if you don't mm -hmm. like actually see it on the trees as you're walking around. I think um, right. if, I, if I did my work here, um, it should make it more obvious on the trees that you're seeing out in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and right. look for those other, look for other like subform rules like those those mm -hmm. sort of not rules but they're just like the way structures work like look for them on the tree too and if you discover new ones come back and teach them to me because I, I need to learn more <laughs> about them too for sure yeah no no I'm, I'm definitely on it and yeah that's it's it's funny because you know i, I of course you want to you want to get better drawing getting your drawing chops and up and stuff like that but because i'm making what i do so subject specific i'm like less worried about how good it looks and more so just trying to get good knowledge of what it is. But sometimes that feels like that's half the battle. Yeah. It's it like is. Not even how good you can draw, but just understanding what it is you're even drawing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, you know? yeah, that is, that is the battle. It really is. You're thinking the right way. Mm -hmm. I, I feel lucky that I started with design because design mm -hmm. is much more about that stuff. Um, right. So it, it kind of clued me into it early and made it 
made it more obvious that that stuff was important and that it informed the more, I don't even know what to call it, the more illustration, fine art side of things. Right. Know? So, yeah, but it, it's such important stuff to hunt for and pay attention to. And every little morsel of it that you can find is like, <laughs> mm, just eat it up and yeah. store it forever. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's filling. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. You've been wonderful today. Been really helpful. My pleasure, man. Um, yeah, really great talking to you as always. And uh, thank you again for uh, letting me share this with other people too. Yeah, no, cool. I'll be excited to see when it's, when it's up. Yeah, it'll be soon, hopefully. And um, for anybody out there, uh, I will put mm -hmm. Mel's uh, Instagram and any other pages that he wants in the description if you want to go check out more of his work and follow him. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. No problem. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm.